and the very same network that patted itself on the back for the journalism they conducted throughout the Mueller investigation did more of that same journalism last night. Here's CNN's Anderson Cooper badgering White House Principal Deputy Press Secretary Hogan Gidley. Where I'm trying to so go long. is to get an actual what Democrats have from wanted you. for so long is for Democrats the president to be wanted. guilty. If they had anything on him, he'd be indicted today. He wasn't okay. because okay. they don't have the evidence. Did the president lie? They have to put up or shut up here, Anderson. They Did don't the president have lie? Did the president I'm not lie? aware of. I'm not. No, I'm not aware of him lying. He's, he hasn't lied to me. Paper, I feel bad that you're scared nothing. to say that your boss lied. It just there's seems, nothing. I just said I don't he know didn't. why. I, there I would is, not work in that situation. You have, with me now is Hogan Gidley. Um, Hogan, you know, I would. I, I was like, I love watching on TV. You know, what I would said, let me tell you, let's talk about your boss, Anderson. Let's talk about Mr. Zucker. Right. Why don't I have a conversation? Because this this little gotcha game, we can go two ways with it. I, everybody's everybody feels because they're they're hosts on a cable network that the table can be turned on all of us. Well, believe me, I'm always in the crosshairs. Right. The but but what was that like being on set? I mean, it was one hit after the other. He's obviously focusing on the 10 obstructive acts. Sure. Well, listen, first of all, I'm not going to take a lecture on truth telling from uh, anybody in the mainstream media who has been lying about this president for the last two years, telling the American people that Donald Trump committed treason, which is a crime punishable by, punishable by death, as you well know. What you didn't play in that clip was after he said that, I told him, you have a panelist, a panel full of liars every night on this show. Darn, we did I know, we you didn't, but that's, it, that's okay. I'm giving Darn. it to you. The point is, for me to sit there with CNN and listen to them, who they wanted this to be true yeah. so badly, so many in the media did, and it, 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 I understand why they don't drop it, because if they did, they'd be admitting the fact that the last two years of their life was a complete and total waste. Uh, Mitt Romney tonight uh, released a statement. I'm sickened at the extent and pervasiveness of dishonesty and misdirection by individuals in the highest office of the land, including the president. And then he went on to say, reading the report is a sobering revelation of how far we have strayed from the aspirations and principles of the founders. What do you think about old Mitt Romney coming Look. out? I'll tell you what's sobering is the fact that someone like Mitt Romney would join in with the, the, the chorus of people who refuse to acknowledge the fact that after, you know, $35 million and 1.4 million documents and countless hours of testimony, the president being an open book allowing uh, all of this to be put forth public, not asking for redactions, not meddling at all, not firing anybody, allowing this to go forward, that he would join with the Democrats and say, we want more. I am telling you right now, this isn't moving the goalposts uh, to these people. This is changing stadiums. Now we're in a whole another ball game here. You could let the Democrats work in the White House, give them all top secret security clearances, let them stay in the Oval all day and sleep in the residence, and it still wouldn't be enough for them. They want something else. Maybe he did this, but I don't remember Anderson Cooper getting Susan Rice across the table from him and asked him, why did you go out to all these Sunday shows and say that the, the Benghazi attack was started by some anti-Islamic video? Why'd you do that? Like, I, maybe he did, and I'm forgetting it, but I don't. I don't remember the same ferocity of the criticism. Look, you've worked with the president for some time now. I know him quite well. well. He's tough. Like, he's, he, he can be tough, but he's also funny and charming. But he's demanding, and I, I never, am, I never am rattled by a demanding boss because it's someone who wants to hold the bar high. Absolutely. And he, and, and I know he wants to succeed, and he was frustrated. We all know that because he said it publicly right. that they were going after him. So he said, I'm blanked, you know, F. and he was really angry. And I think he probably told a lot of people a lot of things because he's really angry. What does that tell you about him? And did he ever tell you or anyone you know to go out and tell an untruth? Absolutely not. I've never had a conversation with him like that at all. And let's be honest, any red-blooded American who was falsely accused of a crime for two plus years would probably be a little upset about it, especially when you knew the fact that you had done nothing wrong. No collusion, no obstruction, a complete and total exoneration. And they pushed this lie. And I had some numbers I was looking at. Since May of 2017, the New York Times has put out 1,156 stories about Mueller, CNN 1,965, and MSNBC tops more than 4,000. They just can't get past the fact they didn't get what they wanted here. They wanted a conviction. They wanted a smoking gun. They have no evidence. And like I said last night, if Bob Mueller, 
the special counsel had anything on the president, he would have indicted. Prosecutors prosecute, but they only prosecute if they have the evidence. He didn't, and this is a complete and total exoneration um, for this president. This was shift today on MSNBC. Let's watch. An impeachment proceeding cannot be successful if one party decides they're more loyal to their party or to the person of the president than they are to the Constitution and the country. The GOP has no independence from this president. Uh, it has made itself effectively a cult of Trump's personality. The president of the United States is too weak to confront Vladimir Putin when it comes to election interference. And as long as they interfere on his side, he may even be grateful. Uh, I, I didn't rec I recall him being upset that it all happened under Obama's watch, but you, you can react to any of that. Apparently, uh, the president's just too, is he still, still colluding with Russia? Well, I <laughs> heard him on the same network of the clip you played just earlier with, uh, with someone else at CNN, and the point was he said he didn't feel as though it was time to move forward on impeachment because they didn't have overwhelming and demonstrable evidence. Well, now, wait a minute. You've literally been telling America that you had the evidence. You've seen the collusion. You know it exists. No one pushes up and follows up and says, hey, where's the where's evidence? Where's your evidence? Yeah, are you, are you going to step down for lying about someone for two years? Are you going to be held accountable at all? It's absolutely disgraceful. Um, Stetler, your friend over at CNN, is tweeting out, 39 days since a formal press briefing, not a sign of a confident White House. When's the next press briefing? Uh, I don't know. It, look, the president makes those calls all the time. He lets us know if he wants us to go out, but we gaggle multiple times a day. We go out with the most. Oh, they don't want to gaggle. They we, want to get their we, faces on TV. Uh, well, of course, they got to pad their own careers and yeah, get yeah, some yeah. Con contracts with networks. We know how it works, but we're not. We're not in the business of making them famous. All right, Hogan. Thanks so much for being on with thank us. Thank you. I really appreciate it.